Hi guys, you will be absolutely shocked to hear. It is a nasty, gray, yuck, rainy day here to close out August of 2024. That would be Saturday, August 31st, 2024, as Labor Day weekend unfolds and uh, I get ready for the influx of soggy, pissed off <coughs> vacationers looking for their last weekend of fun in the sun in upstate New York. <laughs> Uh, the great summer of 2024, I cannot think of a better way to uh, close out August. We are two-thirds of the way through 2024. <clears throat> so, uh, originally what I was uh, <coughs> going to do my rant about was uh, the No Shit Sherlock new research coming in, archaeologists have figured out how early humans killed Ice Age mammoths. Yes, it has been long suggest suggested that the arrival of Homo sapiens in the Americas caused or at least contributed to uh-huh. The disappearance of megafauna like mammoths through overhunting. But how exactly did a collection of small, fragile humans take down these four to six ton behemoths some 13,000 years ago? I'm just going to read the, uh, the takeaways. <clears throat> Depictions of ancient humans in both scientific and popular culture contexts picture them throwing spears at the thick hides of mammoths. A new study from archaeologists at UC Berkeley suggests that Pleistocene hunters likely used planted pikes topped with sharp clovis points to kill megafauna like mammoths, mastodons, and even saber-toothed cats. This theory shows how this system would have acted like an ancient hollow point bullet and delivered a more devastating blow compared to a thrown spear. <clears throat> but I'm going to leave that no shit Sherlock story uh, right there and we're going to go over to <clears throat> what we will soon di discover as the literal the literal shithole uh, sub-saharan african country of namibia uh, where we actually have two we actually have two articles uh, from the literal shithole country of Namibia showing up in uh, various places this week. Uh, this is from the Independent. I want to thank Lieutenant Aaron for sending me this one. For anyone who has uh, heard, I think I've interviewed uh, physicist Bill Gady, I think two times, uh, you know, and his hypothesis is that what is going to cause the sixth mass extinction is simply we are going, that humans are going to eat every single one of our fellow earthlings as the collapse of everything uh, it just starts to happen around us. You know, economic collapse, climate collapse, all of these collapses and uh, people can't grow their own food or more likely in countries like Namibia that uh, the rest of the planet will just get sick and tired of sending them more and more food aid to breed more and more people who never should have been born 
that, what do you think they're going to start doing? They're going to start eating their fellow earthlings. And the big question is, what's going to happen after they've eaten all of their fellow earthlings? So uh, here we go, straight out of the Bill Gatey hypothesis. <clears throat> Namibia will call, call, that's another word for kill, 83 elephants and 30 hippos to distribute meat to people hit by drought. 157 animals have already been hunted by professional hunters. Yes, I don't know whether they were using uh, Clovis points or real hollow point bullets, <clears throat> but that's not all. Namibia, you know, the, the, the government of Namibia plans to call, otherwise known as kill, 723 wild animals, including 83 elephants, and distribute the meat to people struggling to feed themselves because of a severe drought across southern Africa the Environment Ministry said, and, and, and guys, it goes without saying uh, that the word overpopulation or even the word population never showing up in this story or the next story we're going to get into about Namibia being the one of the literally one of the biggest shit all countries on the planet. Never, you will not hear. Uh, the words overpopulation or population, but just so you know, uh, when I was born about 65 years ago, uh, there were about a half million uh, humans living in Namibia, uh, and now there are over three million people living in Namibia, so what's that, a six-fold increase in the human population uh, in, pretty much in my lifetime. But the, the reporters, the editors, the publishers, this article is from The Independent over there in England, uh, have no interest in... Uh, and putting in this little inconvenient truth about uh, is there any link to overpopulation in this story. So anyway, we have 723 wild animals going into the stew pot uh, in Namibia. I, I, I mean, being provided by the government. <clears throat> to feed uh, all of these starving people who never should have been born as they uh, deal with this mega drought, which may or may not have been caused by humans. Okay, the call, otherwise known as the kill, will take place in parks. You know, where else do I find a bunch of docile animals, go out and send a bunch of hunters out into your national parks and start killing things. In parks it, and communal areas where authorities believe that animal numbers, huh, that non-human numbers exceed available grazing land and water supplies, it said in a statement issued on Monday. <clears throat> the country also plans to call 30 hippos, 60 buffalo, 50 impala, 100 wildebeest, 100 eland, and 300 zebras. <clears throat> Southern Africa is facing its worst drought in decades, with Namibia having exhausted 84% of its 
of its food reserves last month, according to the United Nations, nearly half of Namibia's population is expected to experience high levels of food insecurity in the coming months. Yes, and, uh, and, and I like uh, this delicately worded sentence. With such a severe drought, human wildlife conflicts are expected to increase if the authorities do not intervene, the environment ministry said. It, it sounds to me like sending the troops in to uh, murder 723 non-human Namibians to put in the stew pots of uh, all of these uh, Namibians who never should have been born sounds to me kind of like a human wildlife conflict, but uh, what a uh, what I expect it means is the human wildlife conflicts uh, as everything collapses and uh, these people go right on breeding uh, while they're starving. Uh, is that more and more people, uh, more and more humans are going to start uh, taking their stomachs into their own hands and killing their fellow earthlings. That's probably what human wildlife conflicts means in this instance. Yes. <clears throat> uh, quoting the Environment Ministry, quote, this exercise is necessary and is in line with our constitutional mandate where our natural resources, meaning their fellow humans, are used for the benefit of Namibian citizens. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Uh, constitutionally mandated the uh, sixth mass extinction is constitutionally mandated. So, you, 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 you know, it, it, it begs the question uh, that Bill Gady asked. Okay, <clears throat> so the government of Namibia goes into their national parks, guns down, uh, let's call it 800 non-human uh, Namibians, parcels it out among three million people. I don't know what 783 and uh, 3 million is, but I'm guessing uh, they're going to eat every one of those animals in, in about a week. Hell, I don't even think it's going to take a week. Probably one day, uh, those 783 non-human Namibians are, are going to be eaten. And uh, so the people can go right on breeding. Uh... But anyway, we're going to literally draw the dots between all of that meat eating and this long book length story, which I guess originally uh, came out in what's Earth Food Life. Um, This, I, I, I mean, a book-length story, and uh, I, I just read the opening few paragraphs and, and, and the end of it. Good Lord, I, I, I cannot believe one human on this planet made it uh, one-fourth of the way through this story. But anyway, uh, if anybody is looking uh, at what the collapse of everything is going to look like. Uh, I have been saying since I first went down this rabbit hole <clears throat> 16 years ago, uh, the, the postcard, the snapshot of collapse 
you look towards sub-Saharan Africa for what collapse is going to look like. <clears throat> so we're going to go from eating our fellow earthlings to shitting them out. <clears throat> Sanitation in Namibia is a catastrophe for its people and environment. More than a million Namibians lack adequate access to toilets, resulting in one of the world's highest rates of open defecation. There you go. Uh, <clears throat> from the introduction to this book-length article uh, by Freddie Clayton. Freddie looks like a nice guy. <clears throat> From the outskirts of cities to the most rural parts of the country, more than one million Namibians lack adequate access to toilets, and they are often faced with only one option, open defecation. You know, just mean, you know, just shitting wherever you happen to be standing. According to the World Health Organization and UNICEF, in 2020, I guess, is the most recent uh, year that these figures were available, <clears throat> Namibia ranked sixth. I don't know what the top five are. Namibia came in number six for the highest rate of open defecation in the world at 47%. Less than half of the country's two and a half million citizens use facilities that safely separate waste from human contact, while some 5% use inadequate facilities such as open pits, hanging latrines. I don't even want to know what a hanging latrine is, and don't forget buckets. And uh, just for full disclosure, the uh, person talking to you, chronicling the collapse of everything, uh, this is TMI, but I just uh, did my business in a bucket uh, about an hour ago. Uh, there you go. So it's not only Namibia. Uh, it is also the Finger Lakes of New York. Uh, where people are defecating in buckets. But anyway, <clears throat> uh, the consequences extend far beyond foul odor. The sheer amount of human feces deposited in and around Namibian homes makes avoiding contact and even ingestion of it almost impossible. Excrement litters the ground between shacks where children who never should have been born play and flies travel freely from waste to fluids and food as feces seep into the environment Crops and vital water sources used for drinking, cooking, and fishing are contaminated. These conditions put Namibians, especially children who never should have been born, at risk of deadly fecal oral diseases. Oh, God. Uh... Anyway, this, uh, th this, in, in rural areas, uh, open defecation exceeds 70%. Would you believe that Namibia is on course to miss its sanitation targets? I'm just reading the, I mean, this, this, this article has chapters 
Would you believe there has been a government failure on sanitation? Yes. Uh, that chapter, the government failure on sanitation takes up about a hundred pages. How about a lack of coordination between all these different agencies? Uh, the toilet target. The toilet target. Between 2011 and 2013, the government constructed 10,000 dry ecoson toilets yes uh, at a cost of 22 million US dollars still uh, many are no longer usable because residents say they were not provided with instruction promotion cleaning or maintenance guidance upon installation and I have heard this story uh, all over the place where these little, uh, you know, save the, the, the social justice warriors who will never admit that all of these kids should never have been born. They go to all these villages all over the world building these eco toilets, which if the people ever use them at all, uh, last about a week. They are an absolute joke. Uh, I, I'm assuming the, uh, I am assuming that the words overpopulation or population are nowhere mentioned in this book-length manuscript. Uh, this is uh, The War and Peace of Shitting in Namibia. Uh, I like this. The view from the ground. I, 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 I can imagine what the view from the ground in Namibia uh, while the government works to improve access, many Namibians remain discouraged by previous attempts to provide their villages with sanitation. And then they uh, go around interviewing, uh, you, you, you know, just going around the village interviewing people uh, about their adventures uh, and shitting on the on the ground, I wanted to uh, you know talking about uh, all of the schools that uh, like all, like very few of the schools e e even have toilets. Uh, those that do have one for the girls and one for the boys. And good God. Uh, where is this? Uh, okay. Daily, Natalia Shanika, age 15, escorts her five younger siblings across a busy road to a landfill to relieve themselves as they squat partially hidden by scraps of corrugated iron and used toilet paper their older sister keeps wash keeps watch quote i guess she has two older we are a family of eight. This is the, the 15 year old uh, girl. <coughs> Quote We are a family of eight in a shack in a community 
that has no water points or toilets. Yes, uh, said Sean, Sh Shanika. Uh, Together with our parents, we relieve ourselves in the dump behind our home. When I'm on my period, it's the same place I use as a toilet and where I throw my used pads, she added. These conditions mean she and her, whatever it is, number of siblings suffer from frequent infections and bouts of diarrhea along with the thousands of other men, women, and children who use the same and other strips of wasteland as toilets. Good God. And then uh, looking ahead to the future of the shithole country of Namibia, I think we all know what uh, the future of uh, the shithole country of Namibia is going to look like. But don't worry, wrapping it up, the Namibian, the Namibian government takes action. Yes. Uh, Dr. Elijah Naguare revealed that extensive toilet construction projects are underway in seven regions as part of the Namibia Water Sector Support Program, marking one of the largest infrastructure endeavors in the nation's history. Significantly, these toilet construction projects are now accompanied by essential engagement efforts to educate communities on the proper use and maintenance of the facilities and to promote other hygiene practices. I don't know if one of the hygiene practices they are promoting is to keep your filthy pecker uh, in, in your pants and to not let your shit stained knickers down. You, you, you know, a family of eight living in a shack uh, in, in, in a community with no public water and no toilets. And uh, it just, uh, you know, it, it just begs the question uh, when, when these two clueless morons start, you know, decided to start raising a family, they wake up and look around their shack uh, with no running water, with no toilet, uh, no public water in the town, and no public toilets anywhere in the town. Uh, look around their shack and, and decide to uh, have so far is it six, seven, or eight kids and, and, and counting. Uh, and, and, and this is uh, all over Sub-Saharan Africa and, and, and you wonder why uh, Sub-Saharan Africa is, is literally uh, a, a shithole as Donald Trump uh, pointed out uh, in 2016, uh, one of the few one of the few honest things uh, Donald Trump ever said. They're a bunch of shithole countries. Half of the population, which is six times as big as it was when I was born, facing extreme food insecurity. So where the hell do you think the food's coming from? It, it, it's coming out of the national parks. Jesus Christ. But anyway, as someone said in a recent comment on that other channel, the truth is racist. If you are a white male with a southern accent pointing out that maybe 
just maybe people who were born in, you know, who live in a shack uh, with no toilet or running water, and the entire town, there, there's no water or sewage, and uh, they, they decide that's as good a place as any to have six kids. Uh, if you have a problem with that, you're a racist. The truth is racist. But anyway, enough talking about the shithole country of Namibia. <clears throat> I need to go uh, make sure the, the five-gallon buckets in my outhouses and my uh, vacation rental uh, tiny houses... are cleaned and ready for the flood of wet, soggy stragglers showing up here in about an hour to uh, celebrate the end of summer uh, on another rainy, depressing summer day in 2024. Get out there and enjoy your own five-gallon bucket in your own elephant short ribs while you still can. My guys.